In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of the passive sign convention of power. The passive sign convention is used to account for the power in a circuit. It's related to the conservation of energy principles, which state that the power put into a circuit must equal the power taken from the circuit, or P out equals P in. But when we're analyzing a circuit, we don't always know at the outset which devices are acting as sources of power and actually putting power into the circuit, and which devices are acting as uh, places where power is dissipated or power is removed from the circuit. Devices that place energy into the circuit are known as sources, and devices that dissipate that energy from the circuit to the environment around it are known as loads. So a source, as we've already talked about, would be a battery or a generator. A load could be something like a resistive coil, a motor, or a light bulb. But again, we don't always know at the outset which devices are acting as sources and which devices are acting as loads. So because of this, we state the conservation property by saying then that the sum of all power, the sum of the power associated with all the devices, must equal zero. Now for that to be true, there must be positive power and negative power because if you are going to add up a bunch of quantities and the sum of those quantities equals zero, some of them have got to be positive and some of them must be negative. So the passive sign convention says that positive power or power with a positive sign in front of it, positive power will be power that is leaving the circuit. So positive power that is leaving is positive, we'll have a positive sign associated with it, and power entering the circuit will be negative or have a negative sign associated with it. In this diagram, we have a circuit consisting of a source and a load. In both of these devices, the voltage is the same. This source is providing a voltage plus to minus, which is then applied to the load plus to minus. The current is leaving the source and being delivered to the load. So in both of these devices, the voltage and current are the same. And we learned in the previous that power is equal to I times V. So since these devices have both the same, positive, have both the same voltage and the same current, when one of them is serving as a source and the other is serving as a load, we need to define or we need to understand where or how we assign the, uh, the signs, S-I-G-N, of the power. So in the source, energy is transferred to the charges to raise them to a higher voltage at the positive terminal. When a, path is, a closed path exists for charge to flow, in a source, the charge or the current leaves the positive terminal, the positive referenced voltage terminal. In a, in a load, the current enters the higher voltage terminal and leaves the lower voltage terminal, or it enters the positive terminal and leaves the negative terminal. In the process, the energy that was placed into that charge is then dissipated as it passes through the load. Now, according to our, pa our passive sign convention, power entering the circuit is negative. So the source puts energy or power into the circuit, and so at the source side, we're going to say P is equal to negative I times V. At the load side, power is leaving the circuit, and we will then say that the power associated with a load is equal to a positive I times V. So for example, we have represented here a device. We don't know what the device is. It could be a resistor, it could be a light bulb, it could be a power source. We don't know. But the way the current is referenced, flowing into the minus sign, the lower voltage reference terminal, and leaving the positive voltage terminal, 
that is the relationship of a source. This device, at least as the voltage and current are referenced, with the current leaving the positive terminal and entering the negative terminal, this is referenced as though it were a source, and we would say then that power is equal to negative I times V. Let's do an example to show how this works. We have two different devices shown here. In this device, the voltage is referenced plus to minus, so the higher voltage reference is on the top terminal and the lower voltage is on the negative terminal. And current is referenced with this device flowing into the lower terminal here. It's flowing into the negative terminal and flowing out of the positive terminal. Once again, a source produces current or current leaves a source terminal at the positive. So the way this is referenced, and again, we don't know what's going on inside here, but the way this is referenced, simply by having a positive negative voltage reference with a current referenced into the negative terminal, we have then that P is equal to negative because it's being because the references are consistent with the source. P is equal to negative I times V. Now we're told here that I is equal to negative 5 amps. What does a negative mean? Well, negative means simply that the current flowing in this direction, current flowing as referenced, is negative 5 amps. In reality, what's happening is the charge is going in the opposite direction. So we'd have then P is equal to negative, I is negative 5 amps, V is 10 volts, a negative times a negative is a positive 50 watts. So in reality, given these measured voltage and current values, according to the references shown, yields a positive 50 watts. This device would actually would be, be uh, functioning as a load, even though our choice of reference for the current suggests that it's referenced as a source. But when we got around to measuring the current, we found out the current really wasn't flowing in. The actual charge wasn't going in the negative terminal. It was coming out the negative terminal or going into the positive terminal. And in reality, that's what happens with a load. So the positive 50 watts then tells us that this device is, in fact, acting as a load. Now here we have the same device, only, well, not the same device. We have another device. Here, the voltage is referenced plus to minus. This time the current is referenced into the positive terminal. This combination of reference with current going in the positive and out the negative is the reference for a load, and we have then P is equal to positive I times V. So it would be positive, once again, our current is negative 5 amps. Our V is 10 volts. And we get then that the power associated with this device is negative 50 watts. And the fact that it's negative tells us that this then is acting as a source. Once again, the negative sign means that the current flowing in this direction is negative 5 amps, which in reality tells us that we have 5 amps of current flowing in that direction, which is leaving the positive terminal and entering the negative terminal. So this device would be a source because its power is negative. This device would be a load because the power associated with it is positive.